Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're watching in the world. I am Martin here again with Eddie and Squigs. So, welcome everyone to this week's Poetry News. We have a competition, we have a submission, and we have an interesting discussion point about a Myanmar poet. So, stay tuned for all of that. And first up is the ninth. And apologies for destroying the pronunciation, the Knights of Bale Five Words International Poetry Competition. They are a Cork Island-based poetry collective that run open mics, do competitions, make poetry films, lots of other stuff with a reach of several thousand across their social media. Why am I telling you this? Because every week on Tuesday, they put five random words on their website. And people then have a week to write a poem featuring all of those words and submit it to them. This is happening every week until January 2022. There are cash prizes for this as well as other things. So winners will receive either 750, 500 or 250 euros for their participation. Selected poems will be made part of an anthology and certain contributors will also be invited to some live readings at some of their events. Anybody from anywhere in the world can enter this competition if you submit a poem that's maximum 50 lines that, like I say, features all five words in the poem. And entries cost five euros per poem. Feels like a fun exercise to do with getting involved with writing prompts, maybe taking your writing in a direction you've perhaps not thought of before. And at this point, I would like to see what Eddie and Squigs think about this. Well, I think it's a great idea to have a weekly sense of inspiration. I personally, um, I've uh, been trying to work with prompts, but I'm more like, you know, that sit and think about things until eureka moment kind of a writer, poet. Um, yeah, but I think it's a great opportunity. And I mean, to participate to something weekly with the possibility of, you know, all the prizes and such to promote your work. Eddie, what do you think? Yeah, I do agree with you that it is, a, it is an interesting thing to do because whenever we think of prompts, we think of a topic that could be taken anywhere. But when you think of just words being displayed that you can go crazy with these words, that's a really nice idea. Actually, I remember when I first took my first creative writing uh, class at college, the first assignment was uh, that there were around like 25 concrete words. Uh, uh, they were so random, like from pizza to car to clothes to uh, building to everything that they were displayed on, in front of us. And our assignment was that we had to write a poem consisting only of these words. So, of course, we could have added uh, these helping verbs and articles and all of that, but the assignment was that we only had to write these 25 to 30 words. And it was such a challenge, but it was so fun because I remember someone writing something about a pizza driving a car. And it was so weird yet so good because poetry could be taken anywhere. It could be so imaginative. And these kind of uh, prompts could lead us in that direction. So that is interesting. I would definitely uh, try to submit something in this uh, competition. Absolutely. I love the idea of having a list of words that you can only use. I've, I've never yeah. tried writing that. I guess that must be really difficult, but also quite rewarding. It is, because like when you try to find these connections be between these words, uh, you can come up with things that are just, you wouldn't think of uh, writing just another poem in, in another prompt using another prompt so that was really interesting and i do like the idea of uh, that festival and the competition it is really interesting absolutely yeah and it's it's kind of a similar idea of unconnected words in that sense so the words for last week for example were film mirror crisp twin and wind so again there's no you know you, you have to really challenge your brain to do that which i think is fantastic yeah. so uh, for anyone wanting to enter, all the details of everything we cover today will be in the description below. So do just click the link if you want to take part. And we will be back after this short break.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm Eddie, and I am joining you from Batoun, the northern uh, city of Lebanon. And today I will be bringing you news about a workshop that is very, very interesting. This workshop will take place on Wednesday, August 25 at 10 a.m. Uh, GMT, and it is part of a three workshop uh, series. But this one will be titled Don't Look Back, Writing the Future. And it is really interesting because as poets, we try to look back at our experiences and we try to um, find ourselves in these, what the romantics would call these spots of time in the past and try to revisit them with our emotions and with our senses. However, this workshop will invite us to look to the future and see how we imagine the future. The human imagination is perfectly adapted future simulator. And in this workshop, you will be uh, trying to harness this fu these future anxieties uh, in the form of poetry, trying to make predictions, trying to look ahead, speculate on futures that could be either utopian or dystopian. No one knows. Uh, so thinking about how we might survive them or enjoy them, uh, whether it is poetic or otherwise. So it is interesting to look at these future events that are unknown and unpredictable and try to situate ourselves in the future rather than the past uh, in the form of poetry. Uh, Squigs and Martin, what do you guys think about this workshop? Well, I find, I find that a really interesting idea um, because like you say, we do tend to look back as poets more than we look forward. It's very true. And I know... I know certainly for me as well, and I don't know if you're the same or if uh, if our viewers are the same, but I find it easier to write emotional or melancholic kind of work. But when I look to the future, I try to be hopeful. And I wonder if that's part of what makes it difficult um, to write in that sort of idea. Um, you know, like if I... I have written happy poems, but my my sort of melancholic introspective poems tend to be I tend to consider them better so you know ways to harness this like, like ways to harness this and ways to look to the future a bit more because the future is critical and the future can be amazing and you know poets have already contributed so much and this is perhaps a way we can contribute even more to the future that, that, than we will already so I think it's a great idea mm -hmm. I think this opens up like further into the future, like uh, avenues for exploring sci-fi, which I do love, and um, yeah, like exploring the human being. Like, how far into the future are we talking about? Like in our lifetime, or because I heard recently or a while ago that so there's a child being born now that's going to live to like 150, just with like the improvements, possible improvements of medication and diet and such. So it's like, well how far can we live into the future and i don't know i i mean it's an interesting workshop it's an interesting concept like martin says it's like uh it's, it's uh it's more common to write about experiences of the past and it's and to hold the future in a hopeful regard it's kind of an irony unfortunately you know like we'll never get there but there's hope and there's goodness there interesting workshop eddie that's my contribution yeah, yeah. i like how you uh, how you both brought up the idea of hope because it is uh when poets talk about future, we most of us try to think of something hopeful. And even if the poem is more negative, it does have this un, this undertone that let's not get there. It always has this hope. And that is very, very powerful as poets. It is a powerful tool uh, that we use uh, to see the future, to try to locate uh, or situate ourselves in the future. All right. So before we move on and go to Squig's uh, part, we are going to stop again for a, a commercial break and then we will meet you right after that. Welcome back everyone. I am Squigs reporting for the Poetry news and um this week actually i wanted to bring back an old article i did back in may 
because I believe um, with our new format, we now have the moment to oh, discuss about it. Uh, back in May, uh, www.rooters.com in, um, in their article reported the, the death of a Myanmar poet, Ket Thi, by the local um, ruling junta at the time. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I invite everyone else to check out this article as well. Um, in his poems, he wrote, um, they shoot in the head, but they don't know that the revolution is in the heart. As well as such lines as, um, I don't want to, oh, before he passed on, he wrote, uh, I don't want to be a hero. I don't want to be a martyr. I don't want to be a weakling. I don't want to be a fool. And uh, I don't want to support injustice. If I have only one minute to live, I want my conscience, my conscience to be clean for that minute. These are um, this and many others. I mean, I guess with the... Uh, with the connectivity now of social media, we are aware of news around the world, and um, so much can be said. But, but to say these things and to cost a person's life, um, I love the poetry's being taken so seriously, but it's um, it's quite scary. It's a responsibility. Uh, I would like to invite my other heralds here to to share their opinions on poetry that can lead to. Yeah, politics like affect politics and I mean it is such a tragedy and it does shed light on how powerful uh, poetry is and no matter what the subject matter of the poem is writing poetry by itself is a political act is a revolutionary act it is a way that you are expressing yourself despite the world or the location or the government or anything trying to shut you out or shut you down. Uh, so it is just writing poetry by itself is so powerful, let alone to try to write poetry that is political, to try to write poetry that fights injustices and fights all of uh, the terrible things of, of the world we live in. And this is such a tragedy and it is very important to shed light on this because people should not be afraid of expressing themselves and to see the world or people in this world angry or willing to murder someone for their thoughts and for their poetry is just devastating and it's just heartbreaking. Well. It's exactly that, isn't it? And you know, it's like, you know, as, as, as poets, we write poetry because we have something to say. And, you know, certainly, you know, coming from the UK, that the UK is a far from perfect country, but generally speaking, you can say what you want to say. I mean, I mean, obviously it's quite right to shut people down when they say something abhorrent, but, but generally speaking, you can say what you say and know that you're not going to get killed for it which is a privilege that you can take for granted but i think these you know um these acts wouldn't be happening um to people like uh, like this myanmar poet um if they weren't perceived as a threat by the people doing it and the reason they're perceived as a threat is because people who run uh, you know, if people are aware that they're doing something wrong, then they're aware that the counter voice is a threat to them. And when that's combined with the power to be able to do something like this, um, it might in the moment perhaps make people afraid to say things, which I guess is part of the point of, of, of their reason for doing it. But it actually has the opposite effect, because the more people talk about it, the more this news is shared, the more people rail against it the more people you're going to have saying this stuff and you know um it's like throughout the course of history you see it might take a while but eventually liberty comes through eventually these you know all this ex it's essentially a form of attempted form of extreme control and eventually this always crumbles but it's our duty to stand up to these threats that these 
you know, these the threats of these acts. It's our duty to stand up to them to ensure that that continues to happen because that's why it's always happened in the past, if that makes sense. Definitely. And um, it makes me think that that ideas are so powerful and um, voices can be can be uh, tools, destruction and creativity. It's the idea that persists after the bloodshed in which change is um, can survive, can, can happen over time, unfortunately. It's just, it's a great, uh, I just want to say it's a great um, responsibility and we should remember those comrades, <laughs> you know? Like, oh, what, 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 what was that quote? They that the, they sh they shoot me in the head, but the revolution comes from the heart. I mean, that Correct. is yeah. incredibly powerful. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but some badass words to go out on, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for giving this moment, and of course, uh, everyone of our viewers, please check out these this and other articles. Um, the link will be on our show. Martin, did you want to speak about more of the poetry events and shows that we have going on at the Poetry Global Network? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So we have loads of shows going on every week here. We have every Saturday at 1am London time, we have the Poets Reacts. Every Sunday at 3am London time, we have the Poets Lighthouse. We broadcast every Monday at 7pm London time. And each week we also have Bottoms Up, our weekly open mic that travels the time zone. So it's always in uh, somebody's afternoon. We would also love to know what you think about all of these stories. We'd love to hear your thoughts, hear your comments, see um, see your articles and uh, submissions and things if you if you think that some of you have would be perfect for the show. So we would love to hear from you, get a dialogue going. So plenty of space in the comments below. And um, how do you get in touch with us, Eddie? You can, of course, you can subscribe. Please subscribe to uh, this channel where we post all of our videos, all of our shows that Martin just mentioned. Also, you can check out our Instagram and Facebook pages, and you can get in touch with us uh, uh, through email on poetryglobalnetwork at gmail.com. That is all we have to do. Uh, we have to present for you uh, today, everyone. Please stay strong, stay safe. And you have, you are powerful people. Stay safe. And we will see you hopefully next week on the Poetry News. Yeah. Goodbye. Everybody. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye.